What is up, Dynasty Leaguers? It is your boy, Addison Hayes, back with you guys to bring you a fantastic video that I have been working on and I think is going to be very valuable for a lot of people out there. It is going to be my top five wide receiver dynasty buys. And now is a fantastic time to be working on and evaluating your dynasty rosters to evaluate you know, all the moves that happened during the draft, during free agency, everything that impacts your roster and your league overall and see where you stand if you're contending or rebuilding moving into 2020 and beyond and i think these wide receivers are in a prime position right now in terms of price and situation that they can be had for cheap or at least cheaper than what they should be going for right now and that i have identified as major buy low so without further ado let us get right into the video <laughs> So with the first wide receiver that I consider to be a dynasty buy, we're going to be looking at Pittsburgh Steelers wide receiver Juju Smith-Schuster. I think a lot of you thought I was going to go Deontay, but it's going to be Juju Smith-Schuster, who after a great rookie campaign and a breakout 2018, Juju was riding high in the dynasty community coming into last season, peaking at six overall as the second wide receiver off the board in dynasty ADP in September 2019. Then... 2019 happened and Juju had a horrendous season with only 42 receptions for 552 yards and three touchdowns while battling injuries and the quarterback carnival that was the Pittsburgh Steelers after they lost Big Ben in week two. There's really nothing positive to be taken away from Juju's 2019 season and honestly I just think we need to wipe away that entire year out of our memories. Hey don't even worry about it. Moving on to why you need to buy Juju, the argument is still predicated on being the wide receiver one in Pittsburgh with Ben Roethlisberger. We have a four game sample size of Juju with Big Ben and without Antonio Brown, including week one in 2019, where we saw that Juju averaged in those four games 8.25 targets, 5.5 receptions, 77 yards, and 0.5 touchdowns for 16.3 fantasy points per game that's a 16 game pace of 132 targets 88 receptions 12 36 yards and eight touchdowns 260 fantasy points which would have been good for the wide receiver seven in 2019 aka Allen robinson now there is a loud group of people out there who tell me that juju can't win against top coverage he was only good because a b was there blah 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 and i i mean i don't want to you know necessarily refute all of that stuff there is evidence especially when you see like matt Harmon's reception perception that shows that juju struggles against man coverage as opposed to zone coverage and while i still believe that you know juju is a fantastic talent uh, wide receivers don't just put up 1400 yard seasons and then just fade away you know in fact i think the additions of deontay johnson uh, the emergence of james washington last year and the addition of Chase Claypool are actually good for Juju and they can be move him back to being a primary slot wide receiver work against slot cornerbacks find those open zones in the defense and just pick apart defenses as Ben Roethlisberger's safety net and wide receiver that he's most comfortable with we forget that prior to 2019 and Ben Roethlisberger's injury the only wide receivers really on this team that Ben has thrown to are Juju and James Washington, and he didn't like James Washington. And so Deontay Johnson is a, a big-time question mark in terms of what he's going to be with Ben Roethlisberger. He's a talented player, and I think he's going to help make Juju be much more comfortable in the slot role that he is going to play. Add in the fact that Juju is still only 23 years old and won't be 24 until the end of November this year, and you're talking about a young talented wide receiver prime for a bounce back in 2020 on a revenge tour despite the terrible 2019 season though juju is still being taken as a mid to late second round pick in dynasty leagues as the seventh wide receiver off the board that might not sound like a buy low but this is a great example of a player whose adp does not match his market value using the dlf trade finder you can see a multitude of trades involving juju at very discounted prices like juju for darnold in the 205 in a one quarterback league juju and Carr for obj juju for the 112 and many many more in just the past couple of weeks all like that now is the time to acquire juju for cheap 
and reap the rewards of a bounce back 2020 season. Moving on to number two is going to be Vikings wide receiver Adam Thielen. And I cannot, for the life of me, understand why the Dynasty community hates Adam Thielen so much. He was 24 yards away from back-to-back 1,300-yard seasons in 2017 and 2019 and then had a rough 2019 where he battled injuries to the tune of only 30 receptions for 418 yards and six touchdowns. Now, I understand that Thielen is quote-unquote old as he turns 30 in August, and I would not advocate buying Thielen if you are rebuilding because he is a depreciating asset in Dynasty, but boy is Thielen a screaming buy low for a lot of people and a lot of teams who are pushing for a title. Thielen already was the wide receiver one in Minnesota, much to the chagrin of Stephon Diggs lovers, but now Thielen is the wide receiver one for the Vikings after they traded Diggs to Buffalo. Yes, they drafted Justin Jefferson in the draft, but that does not change Thielen's positioning on the depth chart or target totem pole. New offensive coordinator Gary Kubiak loves his top wide receiver as well as that player averages 144 targets per game since 2000. There's basically no one else for Cousins to throw to. He already has a connection with and Thielen is going to literally feast in 2020. In terms of price, you're not going to have to pay much more than a Wendy's 4 for 4 meal to get Thielen. Using DLF's Trade Finder and some of these are just ridiculous, dude. Thielen in a second for Nikhil Harry and a second. Thielen in a second for Hunter Renfro and a first. Thielen for a 2021 first. Thielen for David Johnson. Many, many more just like that. If you are pushing for a dynasty title in 2020 and don't already have Thielen, Make that owner an offer that he cannot refuse and go win yourself a championship. Number three on this list for me is Falcons wide receiver Calvin Ridley. After a great rookie season finishing as the wide receiver 22 overall, Calvin Ridley on paper hit the sophomore slump in 2019. However, his 2019 season was actually much better than a lot of people think. Playing in only 13 games, Ridley was actually on pace for 114 targets, 78 receptions, 1,065 yards, and 8-9 to touchdowns, which would have been good for 239 fantasy points as the wide receiver 12 overall. Yeah, a wide receiver 1 finish. Ridley now heads into 2020, primed for his third year breakout season with the potential for a massive target share. With the departure of Austin Hooper and trading Muhammad Sanu to the New England Patriots, Ridley is in line for a 130-plus target season, in my opinion. In three games last year without Austin Hooper, Ridley averaged 10.67 targets, 7.3 receptions, 106.3 yards, and .67 touchdowns for 21.7 fantasy points per game. That is insane production, and while we can't take those numbers and say he'll do that over 16 games without Hooper, it just shows you how productive Calvin Ridley, not Riley Ridley, holy crap, Calvin Ridley, the much better Ridley, can actually be. This season for Atlanta could be very similar to the 2012. This season for Atlanta could be very similar to the 2012 Atlanta Falcons that saw Roddy White as the team's wide receiver one finish with 142 targets, 92 receptions, 1,351 yards, and seven touchdowns, while Julio Jones also produced 128 targets, 79 receptions, 1,198 yards, and 10 touchdowns. Both players finishing as fantasy wide receiver ones. Also of note that 2012 Falcons team was also led by Matt Ryan and offensive coordinator Dirk Cutter. Dynasty owners are starting to wise up to Ridley's potential as more analysts are starting to pump him up for 2020 though. So the time to acquire him is right now and the DLF trade finder shows us he can still be had for reasonable prices like Ridley for T. Higgins and Curtis Samuel, Ridley and Kareem Hunt for a 2021 first and second and more like these. So get ahead of the curve right now before he truly takes the next step into fantasy stardom. So number four on this list, we're going to move down to the cheapest receiver so far and I think the second cheapest wide receiver on this list overall. So Preston Williams, Miami Dolphins wide receiver, had a very nice rookie season before tearing his ACL in week nine. In fact, Williams was on pace for 64 receptions, 856 yards, and six touchdowns on 120 targets, which would have been fourth among rookie wide receivers in yards and the most targeted rookie wide receiver by far 
in 2019 ahead of DK Metcalf, who was the target leader among rookie wide receivers with 100. Because of the injury, however, Williams is not gaining the same sophomore hype as his fellow classmates like Marquise Brown, Deontay Johnson, Darius Slayton, and so on. In fact, Williams is being drafted outside the top 100 right now as the 53rd wide receiver off the board behind 2020 rookies like LaVisca Chenault, Brian Edwards, as well as other vets like the aforementioned Darius Slayton, Will Fuller, and AJ Green. Now you may be thinking that this is great and all, but what is Williams going to do as the wide receiver two behind Devontae Parker after his breakout 2019? Well, Williams was actually pacing Parker in targets before his injury with five games over seven targets and one in the double digits. Williams never even saw below five targets in a single game in 2019 and was being used immediately with both Josh Rosen and Ryan Fitzpatrick. Now you have Fitzpatrick starting the year off immediately for the Dolphins and first round pick Tua Tagovailoa waiting in the wings to take over this offense. Williams is a fantastic buy right now because he is super cheap and will probably serve as your wide receiver four or lower on your dynasty roster. Some of the recent dynasty trades involving Williams on DLF's trade finder are honestly just kind of laughable. The 205 for Williams and the 211, Williams for Kendrick Bourne, the 304 and a 21 second, Williams for Matt Breda and JJ Ortega Whiteside. Like he is super cheap right now for a wide receiver who has weekly flex consideration off the bat with upside in this Dolphins offense moving forward with their young core and ascending team overall. So go buy yourself some Preston Williams and reap the rewards of having a bench stash that could potentially grow into more than that moving down into 2020 and beyond. Moving on to number five on this list, the last wide receiver. And this one is honestly kind of a polarizing one. New York Giants wide receiver Sterling Shepard. Shepard has been on a roller coaster of a ride in terms of dynasty ADP in his career to the point where April and May 2020 are actually the two lowest points he has ever been drafted at in his career. And while his projection to date basically justified this roller coaster value, I believe we still have yet to see the best of Sterling Shepard. Wide receiver guru Matt Harmon recently tweeted out a stat from his own reception perception stating that there have only been four players to have over an 85th percentile success rate versus man coverage without a thousand yard season to date. DK Metcalf, Curtis Samuel, Calvin Ridley, and Sterling Shepard. Many people point to Shepard's injury history as a reason to fade away in favor of other wide receivers. And while I understand that given his extensive injury list with concussions, hamstring, ankles, you name it, you cannot deny what Shepard can do when he's on the field. Shepard was one of only 19 wide receivers to average over eight targets per game and recorded nine or more targets in 60% of his games in 2019. He averaged over 13 fantasy points per game last year, and that was with a 3.6 touchdown rate, which is well below the average rate of 4.5% of the 19 wide receivers with over eight targets per game last year. With Daniel Jones and the entire offense on the rise, Sterling Shepard is a screaming buy in dynasty formats, especially when you look at his recent trades from DLF's trade finder. Hakeem Butler and a 2021 fourth, Sterling Shepard and T.Y. Hilton for the 210 in the 2022 second and third, Rashard Higgins and a 2021 second. The list goes on and on of penny stock trades for Sterling Shepard. At those prices, isn't it just worth a shot to take a chance on a guy who could potentially be the wide receiver one for an up and coming offense like the New York Giants. All right, so I know I said Sterling Shepard was going to be the last wide receiver on this list, but I could not end this video without talking about my boy DJ Moore. So I will call this one a bonus buy high wide receiver for you guys here in this video. If you're in the dynasty game and you're watching this video, you've probably heard DJ Moore's name a lot from the community, calling him the next Chris Godwin, a probable top three dynasty wide receiver this time next year, and so on and on. And you know what? I I agree. After a breakout 2019 sophomore season with 87 receptions for 1,175 yards and four touchdowns on 135 targets, DJ Moore has become the true focal point of the Panthers pass attack outside obviously Christian McCaffrey. It was an impressive season as Moore recorded 53% of his games with over double digit targets which was fifth 
in the National Football League in 2019 and averaged over 15 fantasy points per game. In fact, the numbers are even better when you remove Moore's Week 16 game where he was injured in the first quarter. Using Moore's first 14 games in 2019, he was on pace for 98 receptions, 1,342 yards, and 5 touchdowns on 152 targets, which would have made him the wide receiver 6 on the year instead of the wide receiver 15. Now, I get the qualms around the Panthers in 2020. Teddy Bridgewater is the new quarterback, and he's not known for slinging the rock, you know, like Cam Newton or even Kyle Allen wasn't really afraid to throw it. But he's a fine quarterback and even sustained Michael Thomas's targets during Drew Brees' af- absence, averaging 10.8 targets per game to Thomas, and that is with Alvin Kamara also seeing 6.2 targets per game. Even if you balance those out to account for Christian McCaffrey and his commanding target share, that is still 135 targets over 16 games, which is exactly what DJ Moore had last year. You can even argue that Moore is the best fit for Teddy Bridgewater's offense as he projects well with Teddy's average depth of target per airyards.com in that 5-10 to 10 yard range. Additionally, the Panthers added Matt Rule as their new head coach and Joe Brady as their offensive coordinator. These are interesting hirings to me personally as they're both coming directly from college to the NFL. Brady will be the one calling plays, and need I remind you that he was LSU's offensive coordinator last year with Joe Burrow. I mean, come on now. The offense is going to revolve around getting the ball out of Teddy's hands and into their playmaker's hands, specifically Christian McCaffrey and DJ Moore. We know how prolific LSU was last year with Brady, and Matt Rule used Denzel Mims very well at Baylor to the tune of 66 receptions for 1,020 yards and 12 touchdowns in 2019 in a college season. The challenging part for Dynasty owners is getting more on your teams, but recent Dynasty trades using DLF's Trade Finder show me that he can be had at reasonable prices like DJ Moore for a 2021 first and second more for J.K. Dobbins, which is essentially the 103 or the 104. More for the 109 and a 2021 first, and so on and on. He is worth paying up for as all he needs is a wide receiver one season in 2020 to potentially become a top three dynasty wide receiver as guys above him like Michael Thomas, DeAndre Hopkins, and Devontae Adams all turn 28 or 29 in 2021, and they all have hair-splitting question marks around all of their situations moving on after 2020. Moore literally just turned 23 and is in a prime spot to not only gain value moving forward, but also be a dependable wide receiver one on your team moving forward. And DJ Moore is an extremely awesome buy high right now. And a guy that I had to include on this list as a bonus wide receiver for you guys. So there you have it, folks. Five, nay, six wide receivers that I consider to be great buys in your dynasty leagues. I hope you guys are able to uh, use this information, take some action in your dynasty leagues, get some trades going out there and seeing what comes back to you guys and working out some stuff to hopefully improve your dynasty rosters. So if you like this video, please hit that like button, leave a comment down below. If you guys have some trade questions or you want to talk any more other wide receivers that you guys consider to be buys, coming into the 2020 dynasty season make sure guys that you are also subscribed to this youtube channel and hit that notifications button and be notified every single time that we drop a youtube video like my other drafting lessons videos the adp show with ryan mcdowell and dan myler every week the dlf mailbag show with chris and adam and many many more like these videos and more stuff that we've got in the works as well too so be sure to subscribe ring that notifications bell like comment share this with your friends all that good stuff and get the conversations going and we're here to help you guys with your dynasty league so thank you all so much for tuning in watching this video and we will catch you guys later